Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and there has been a lot of game engine releases in the last 24 hours. We already covered UPBGE, we've got another one that's going to be coming out tomorrow, and then we've got Bevy. Now, Bevy is a Rust-based game engine, one of the new features you can see in action right here, and this is something called SSAO, or Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. Basically, ambient light in the scene can be occluded by objects, you can see how it works right here. So right now, there is no occlusion going on, we'll turn it on to low, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look kind of over here at how the shadow the shadowing goes in the background as we go past so let's turn it to low so you can see like more accurate uh, reflections of the scene of the ambient light in the scene how it's going off these edges and so on medium levels and then we'll do a high level and then finally we will do an ultra level so this is ultra green space ambient occlusion in action basically it's just giving you that better ambient light shadows in your scene and this obviously includes uh as a model is uh, moving around. The other thing we've got going on here is temporal anti-aliasing. This is a new anti-aliasing system in this demo. I'm gonna show you it in another example. So these are two new examples that have been added to the Bevy framework. This one is uh, showcasing the three different methods of anti-aliasing in the game. Basically, this is a way of getting rid of the jaggies around edges, etc. Right now, we have no anti-aliasing at all in this example. You can look here uh, at that shadow line right there and also look over here. Now, I'm going to switch this over to MSAA. And you can see a bit of a change in how things work. Then we got FXAA. And you, obviously, you have different options for the amount. So we're going to put this up to extreme, for example. And then finally, we have temporal anti-aliasing. And we got the ability to denode, denoise or not denoise. Now, the interesting thing I find about temporal anti-aliasing is I'm not sure that this example makes any sense at all because it's not actually animated. So this is showcasing their other anti-aliasing schemes. But the big thing about temporal anti-aliasing is that it's time-based. It looks at previous frames to smooth out how things should look and this is not an animated scene so i'm not sure that this demo actually makes a lot of sense for temporal anti-aliasing but hey you let me know so those are two of the major new graphic features in the bevy framework a little bit about Bevy itself. This is a Rust-based game engine. It is one of the two that I would look at if I was looking at Rust today. I'd be either Bevy or Firox. I've covered that on the channel in the past as well. Uh, this is a 0.11 that was just released. Uh, the 0.10 was released back in March, I believe it was. So April, May, June, July. So we got four months since the last version here. Uh, it is a data-driven engine. At the heart, there is an ECS there. Uh, it should be a very simple engine to pick up and go with. That's one of the things I appreciate because in the Rust ecosystem, there is this tendency to over-engineer the crap out of stuff. Uh, and Bevy doesn't seem to do that. There is a 2D renderer in there, but there's also a 3D renderer as well. Uh, there is a custom render graph, so like, kind of like the programmable pipelines in the world of Unity. Uh, so that functionality is in there. So if you want to create your own custom render pipelines, you can do so. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux, web, iOS, and more on the way, including... Uh, that being Android. There is a UI system built in there. There is a scene loading system. Now this is interesting. So there's actually a scene system in here for loading in 3D scenes, but there are no tools yet. So if you're going to want to create your own world editor, you're going to have to either like customize something like Blender or build your own editor. Although I do believe this is something that is in progress. There is systems in place for sound, for hot reloading. So you can change your assets, reload it without having to actually uh, rebuild your game from scratch. Although it does build pretty fast and it is of course free and and open source. Well, there is also the Bevy 0.11 release. Uh, so again, this happened yesterday that this was announced. I don't know if it was with all these game edges being announced over the weekend, but yeah, there were. So there were 166 contributors, 522 pull requests in this release, and the TLDR version of what is in Bevy 0.11 are screen space ambient occlusion. We talked about that earlier on. Uh, so this simulates the occlusion of indirect slash ambient light in the scenes. We've got temporal anti-aliasing, an anti-aliasing technique that blends the current frame with the past frame uh, so again it only really works with animated scenes so it does make that sample scene a little bit strange to me uh, we've got morph targets so you animate vertex positions on meshes between predefined states this is definitely often used for a different character um, it's used for um, morph targets are often used for um, the syncing of facial work you know um, phonetics around the mouth that kind of stuff uh, robust contrast adaptive sharpening RCAS intelligently 
sharpens renders, which um, pairs nicely with temporal anti-aliasing. There is web GPU support. I think this was actually announced a little while back, but it can now render on the web faster with more features using modern web GPU API. Uh, and the web GPU API is now actually standard in Chrome, which was a big step forward a couple of months back. Uh, parallax mapping, so materials now support an optional depth map, uh, giving flat surfaces a feeling of depth through parallaxing the material's texture. Schedule first AC, um, ECS or empty component system API, so simpler or more elegant way uh, for doing system scheduling, something that pretty much every game does to a certain degree. Uh, immediate mode uh, gizmo rendering for 2D and 3D. ECS audio APIs, more intuitive and idiomatic way to play back audio. UI borders can now, uh, UI nodes can now have configurable borders. Grid UI layout now supports a CSS style grid layout. I want tables, damn it. <laughs> and then UI uh, performance improvements, which is a good thing to see. So you got some more details of everything they're talking about here. So you can see uh, subsurface ambient occlusion on and off and the uh, different effect you get between them. So this is the subsurface ambient occlusion map that is being created by this new functionality. Again, temporal anti-aliasing. Uh, and a non-animated scene, I'm not really sure you're ever going to see much with it, to be honest. But there are now, though, again, those multiple different options. So you've got the multi-sample anti-aliasing, the fast approximate anti-aliasing, and now you've got temporal anti-aliasing, which, again, is time-based, so very good for an animated scene. Um, so here you can see the new uh, temporal anti-aliasing and then temporal anti-aliasing with that new RCAS. A uh, robust contrast adaptive sharpening in action right here. The uh, morph targets functionality, you can see it moving on right here. So again, it's often used for facial blends, facial animation, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, that is kind of the heart of it. So we do have parallax mapping here as well. Um, so parallax maps give, puts normal maps to shame when it comes to giving the illusion of depth to material. Uh, the top half of this video uses parallel maxing plus a normal map, whereas the bottom half only uses a normal map. And yeah, you can definitely see a profound difference in terms of 3D of the two surfaces. So that is the new functionality there. So that's kind of the extent of the 0.11 release. There's obviously more to it. Then there's going to be uh, bug fixes in here as well. Uh, updates, improvements, web GPU support is also a nice thing to be added in. If you're interested in learning about it, they do have a book here for walking you through it, which is very nice. Also come over here to examples. You're going to find there is an absolute ton of examples beyond the one that we uh, saw in action earlier on. And on top of that, that, uh, the community has a number of different examples in different places. They do have Discord server if you have, need help and so on. Uh, and then go to assets. You're going to find a ton of examples here as well. Some of these are going to get a little bit older, but as you can see here, as I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, there is a lot here to work from and to work with. And this is also a completely open source project. So it is hosted up on GitHub. It is under the Apache 2 or MIT license. I'm not sure which one this actually is using. I thought it was MIT, but it looks like it has Apache and MIT. Those two licenses are virtually identical. As I mentioned earlier on, there's also a book to get you up and going. Uh, pretty straightforward. And if you want to check out um if you want to check out Bevy in general, head on over to the GitHub page. Literally just grab the code, grab this URL right here, um, open up command line, cd slash temp git clone, pick that address, it will clone it down. And then you go into, um, just change into that directory like so. And then you can start running things using the cargo. So here, let me just expand this out so you can see it. Cargo run, and then you're gonna probably wanna run one other example. So just dash dash example. And then you're gonna notice over here, if you go into the examples, you've got a ton of different things here. So let's say for example, you wanna see an example game in action, breakout. So just come down here, go back over here to my command prompt, which is over here, and then just do breakout. And this will automatically build and run. I've already done 331 of the 332 dependencies. So the first time you build this, it's gonna build all of the uh, Bevy ecosystem itself. This is gonna run the rest. And then boom, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Here is a breakout example running in Bevy. So if you want to go ahead and check out Bevy, uh, pretty easy to get up and going with. Again, if I was going to work in the Rust ecosystem, it would either be Bevy or Firefox that I would work with. And that is Bevy 0.11. A lot of new graphical functionality in there. Uh, let me know what you think of this in general, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.